everyone, I'm Sarah Levon and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you all about contractions. So what is a contraction? What's happening inside? What does it do to your cervix? Remind you where the cervix is and anything else I can come up with. There's actually a YouTube video slash like Facebook video or something of a childbirth educator that shows this example using a balloon and a ping pong ball of what the contractions are doing in your body. And I've seen it a couple of times. People have sent it to me a bunch of times and I've always been curious to see how it works and what it does. I've never practiced this before so we're totally flexing and flowing and seeing how it goes today. Um, but I'm gonna talk you through what contractions are, kind of using that exercise and seeing how it goes because childbirth education should be fun and interesting and uh, not boring. So let's get to it. <laughs> I can't, this is, this is too much. I have a uh, balloon and I have a ping pong ball. Both are bought from the dollar store and it's a little like smushy so we'll see how this goes. Basically if you imagine this is your uterus if you can see prior to getting pregnant and honestly your uterus is usually about the size of your fist when you're not pregnant that's the size of my uterus right now so you can expect it to be a little bit bigger than this but in general this little bitty muscular organ that is tucked nice and in there in your pelvis. So then you get pregnant and a baby's added to the situation. It actually implants onto the side of the uterus and then your uterus starts growing. Oh my god, how do they do this? I should have maybe watched the video again before because it's been like months since I've seen it. I can't get it in. Let's try again. Oh! Huh? Okay. Almost. Why won't it go in? Please don't break. Okay. Ha! Huh? Okay. Hallelujah, we are one step closer. So my ping pong ball is now in there and that's going to represent the baby's head. Mind you, your baby's head is a lot larger than a ping pong ball, but you kind of get the idea. And I guess when like it actually starts doing something, like we're gonna just pretend like it's the top of the baby's head, okay? So. How big do I blow this thing? You get a little pregnant, now you're showing. Baby's tiny in there, I guess this would be like a little baby belly. Like you're showing at this point. And then it continues to grow. Bigger and bigger. I really don't know how big to blow it up. So let's just say this is a full term uterus, which kind of makes sense, right? This was filling my abdomen. There could be like a Maybe not quite a six pound baby in there, but we're just gonna pretend once again, this is your fully pregnant uterus. So now I have to get the ball in the bottom. How do they do that? Oh, oh, it works. Okay, <laughs> so nervous. This is your uterus. This is actually really cool. Your uterus grows about 30 times the size when you're pregnant. And it just kind of sits there dormant throughout your pregnancy. And then there's all these like hormone changes that happen and all of a sudden your body at some point kind of starts practicing. It's not coordinated. It's not any kind of like pattern to it. It's just your uterus is irritable. Now women, you may feel like every once in a while your belly gets hard and you're like, wow. Wow, it's like I'm flexing, but I'm not flexing, okay? That's a little practice contraction. When you imagine your uterus as a muscle, there are different fibers in the uterus. And if you think back to a steak, you know how a steak kind of has like grains in it? And if you cut with the grain, it is like a lot easier to cut than when you cut against the grain. So the grains in your uterus are this way, they're up and down. So they're tightening this way. And then you also have grains going this way across ways then the uterus squeezes this way as well so when a contraction happens and it's truly a contraction like a labor contraction your uterus is now coordinated in the way that it's squeezing when your uterus starts organizing its squeezes it's going to squeeze this way on the cervix. This is like really actually kind of cool. At the bottom is your cervix. We still have this plug keeping the baby inside. And so when there's that plug there, the baby, imagine that ping pong ball that's stuck at the bottom, baby's not coming through this tiny little hole, okay? If I were to do a vaginal exam, this would be a one centimeter cervix. So your cervix is thick, it's hard, it's plugging the baby from coming out. No matter how hard these contractions are right now, your baby is not gonna fall out in the car. It's not going to 
deliver at home. I was at a labor recently where she kept looking at me like, I'm not gonna have my baby, right? I was like, no, we are not there yet at all. So just because you're having contractions doesn't mean that the baby's gonna fall out because you have this cervix here plugging the baby from coming out. Now, eventually, we need this plug to be gone. We need it to open up so much that it expels the baby. What happens is your body starts coordinating those squeezes and it takes time. I'm squeezing like actually pretty hard. I'm so scared this thing's gonna pop in my face. So you're squeezing on that cervix and that pressure of the head or the ping pong ball on the cervix is going to, holy crap, I have to squeeze hard to get this thing out. Oh my God, I'm so nervous. Even though I'm squeezing really, really hard, it still is not really doing much. It's gonna take some time for that cervix to thin out, to open up, and it's gonna take some strong, and now especially I'm learning, some strong contractions to get this baby out. Oh my gosh, I'm squeezing so hard. Can you see that? So it's thinning out the cervix every time. It's putting pressure on the uterus. I'm tired. This is a lot of work. It feels like I'm in labor, even though I'm not. Just kidding, ladies. Don't roll your eyes. I know, I know, I'm being dramatic. I'm just gonna keep squeezing and laboring and trying not to pop it with my nails because my nails are really long right now. If you haven't watched my video of what is labor, that's gonna talk about that thinning. So nervous. And then the vaginal exam one talks about effacing, so we're thinning every time. I'm taking air out. This is like, I feel like my hands are too small. I do have really tiny hands though. Shaking right now. Squeezing and thinning out the cervix. But look at how hard I have to squeeze. Like it really has to do some work to thin it out over time. Okay, and it takes a lot of these little squeezes to get the ping pong ball down. Now, as the baby starts sitting a little lower, notice, I like it! Notice how the head is sitting so much smaller and it kind of slips back and forth. That's not uncommon in labor, but your cervix has gotten significantly thinner-ish. Ah! Oh my God, oh my God! <gasps> So see how much thinner it's getting? So now it's more and more effaced as the head comes down. But it takes more and more pressure on that cervix in order to thin out and really start opening up. For a first time mom, you're gonna thin out before you dilate. That is not uncommon. Um, and now, look at how thin we are, right? That head is totally engaged in the pelvis and the cervix is so much thinner. Now I would say like if I was really doing a vaginal exam, that would be like 80% of 100% effaced. And um, oh, it's hot. Oh my God, it slipped back up. So I'm squeezing, bringing the baby down, thinning, thinning, thinning. As it thins, you're gonna start to see some dilation. Oh my God. Okay, look, so now my cervix is super duper thin and I'm starting to dilate a little bit. That extra pressure is gonna start opening the cervix. So you imagine, actually, if the ping pong ball was the size of the baby's head, we'd be almost halfway there. So I'd say we'd be at like five, six centimeters in relation to like, if this was a full size head. <laughs> oh my God. More and more contractions, however long that it takes. Oh my God. not getting any lower. <laughs> I guess it's like also a common thing you hear of like, why am I not changing? I will squeeze this thing till the ping pong ball pops out. So you're just gonna have to wait for it and see how this goes. Continue to have contractions. And those contractions get stronger and stronger and stronger and they continue to come. It's the number of contractions. It's the strength of the contractions. As you get closer and closer to delivery, your contractions will be much, much more closer together. And if you imagine, it's just like the ball actually, that the longer the space between the contractions, the more chance that the baby has to kind of creep back upwards. Remember that from before? Once the head is nice and engaged in the pelvis 
and nice and low, then it's not gonna probably scoot back up into the pelvis, but once it's settled, you need those contractions that are regular, consistent, and strong enough to keep the baby down there, and that pressure on the cervix is what's going to thin it out and dilate it. I am squeezing so hard, guys. Oh my word, this is crazy. Now your cervix is totally effaced, so it's 100% there. The head is starting to dilate it. You're starting to feel a little more pressure, but I need baby to start coming out because my muscles hurt. I feel like I'm doing this wrong. Why is it taking so long? I'm sweating, I need a break. Oh, okay. That's gonna be easier. Is that weird? <laughs> it this way okay so now our contractions were flipped on our back so just imagine this is like coming out of me I'm squeezing from the top because the, the fibers push from the top and then they squeeze on the side so I'm gonna use my body because that's probably oh my god I'm shaking I'm so nervous <laughs> so you're pushing with contractions maybe now although the holy crap okay now we're just dilating we're getting so much closer so much pressure pushing out that cervix. <laughs> and we're stuck at about six centimeters, yet the baby's so low, come on, come on. Okay, so, what if I can't get it out? I'm sure though, I've heard people like, what if I can't get it out? Your body can get it out. I'm speaking to the choir here, okay? You can get it out, Sarah. Let's just use this as an analogy for labor. One of the best tools that I have for my mamas, one of the things I say all throughout my labors with my clients. Holy freaking moly. So we're gonna trust our instincts. We are gonna trust in our body that it knows what to do, just like this little hole knows what to do. It's not coming out. I mean, I never say that, actually. I do not say that. <laughs> but what I say is, I am sweating. This is like a lot of work. We are gonna just let it keep doing its job. See how it's dilating? And then all in its own perfect timing. Let me just warn you that probably how the how the ping pong ball falls out of this balloon is not how the baby comes out of you. Okay, watch my tearing video. That'll make you feel a little better. Slow and controlled. Oh my god. a baby. Oh, I'm so hot. Okay, we can do this. We can do this, guys. You can do this. It's dilating more. Ah! Uh, do you see it? We're like almost there. Ah! I can't, I can't, I can't. I'm so scared for it to fall out. Oh my God. Okay. I think it might come on this next one, guys. Okay, so the uterus is squeezing. Ah! I'm legit having a baby. Holy crap. Oh my god. Oh my god. Ah! that again so that is your only take that you're getting um I'm legit shaking right now that was so scary another analogy for labor that labor is a lot of work and at the end your adrenaline kicks in and that fight or flight of being scared makes you I am not even exaggerating like look at my hand right now just this one I don't know why this one's not shaking <sighs> It's normal to shake at the end of labor, like eight to 10 centimeters, and after delivery, it's a lot of stress on your body. It's normal to sweat, it's normal to vomit, it's normal to have doubts and anxieties, to think it's not coming, and then all of a sudden, the baby just shoots out your badge. Even when you think like it's never gonna happen. <sighs> that was, that was, that was, a, that was intense. I need water. All right, so that was fun. I don't know that I have anything else to say more about contractions at this point because I am just kind of in complete shock and awe at how intense that was and how I legit feel like I 
went through like a little mini birth simulation, which I suppose is exactly what is supposed to happen. Um, but I think I'm done. Thanks everyone for being with me here today. As usual, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment below. You can go to bundlebirth.com if you want more information from me or you're looking for labor support or education or coaching services. I got all that going on over there. If you have any other videos that you've seen of other things that people have done related to childbirth that you want me to try, throw them in the, in the comment box below. That was actually really fun. I am still going to take some time to recover from the stress slash like, adrenaline rush that that was but i look forward to seeing you soon and until next time don't forget to flex and flow see you later so incredibly hot in this room i am a man i am sweating like a man why does it always get so hot i also offer virtual support no wait i'm not really sure should i put it in first oh okay what do i how do i get it in <laughs> what do i do hmm Holy crap, this is like a lot. Oh God, I need it look so easy. Oh, and we're broken. That didn't work. <laughs> Imagine like a big piece of steak. <laughs> That's kind of what your uterus looks like when it's raw. Oh my God. See how it's stronger and... <sighs> this is terrifying. I'm squeezing. Squeeze it the way it should. Going to start. I can't do it that way. One second. That was wild. That was that was one heck of a experiment. <laughs>